Today, we are going to focus on how I fixed my histamine intolerance. If you want to learn more about histamine in general, you can check out several videos that I will link at the end here, as I would like to be specific about the most significant thing I overlooked. And I've gotten so many emails of people suffering from histamine intolerance that I'm fairly certain it will happen on most carnivore diets under current assumptions. It's one of the largest concerns with a carnivore diet, possibly eclipsed by fatigue caused by eating two pounds of estrogenic feedlot meat but even if you're following a super high quality carnivore diet this can still happen to you and there are literally hundreds of posts on carnivore forums over the past few years and I haven't seen one correct solution posted. The gist of these posts is that the person is suffering from various symptoms such as anxiety, skin breaking out, especially insomnia, various immune disorders. The moronic advice given is typically to eat more meat and you know the moderators of these carnivore forms are unfortunately paid chills from big meat. So the poor person is suffering from eating meat and they tell them to eat more meat. We can assume this will happen on a beef only carnivore diet. Again, the common symptoms being insomnia, heart palpitations, anxiety, and uh, there's a very funny quote from Family Guy. Uh, Two months is a long time when you don't sleep and only eat ground beef. I feel like that quote was directly ripped from the carnivore diet. The problem is meat, eggs, dairy, all land animal foods that people are heavily basing their carnivore diets around are zinc based. And this is the basic cause for carnivore driven histamine intolerance. It's a copper deficiency with an excess of zinc because the amount of zinc in your body is supposed to have a certain ratio compared to the copper. Zinc anywhere from 8 to 15 parts and copper is one part. But when you go carnivore, you barely get any copper. Even if you're eating liver, you know, which is the highest copper food, the copper in the liver is used to metabolize the high iron content of liver. You know, the blood in your body, the red blood cells are composed of iron and copper. So if you're consuming a large amount of iron, red meat, liver, even if you're getting copper, it's definitely not enough. Normally, in a balanced diet of quality foods, you will get adequate copper by varying your meat sources with seafood as well as incorporating some plant foods. The reason copper deficiency causes histamine intolerance is that our bodies remove histamine with the Dow enzyme. This Dow enzyme requires vitamin B6, copper, and vitamin C. You know, a ribeye steak only carnivore diet is lacking these nutrients greatly and you know, you are most likely getting enough vitamin B6 because the main source of vitamin B6 is meat. Uh, you probably are getting enough vitamin C because believe it or not, if you're consuming high quality animal foods, even if you're cooking them, you know, they do have enough vitamin C for our bodies to function. You know, especially if you're eating a lot of raw meat products, vitamin C isn't really that much of an issue. But Copper is missing because even if you're consuming liver, oysters, foods that are incredibly high in copper, you know, liver has a lot of iron, which negates the copper. Oysters have an incredibly high amount of zinc, which negates the copper. So unfortunately, people look at foods high in copper and they say, oh, I'm getting plenty of those foods, but it's not about the copper content of the food. It's about the copper to zinc ratio in the food. Uh, so when you have something like salmon or mushrooms, they do have a copper to zinc ratio that is heavily in favor of copper. So technically you could be consuming those types of foods, but uh, you know, it's not that easy to fix a zinc imbalance after you've been on a carnivore diet for a year or two or you know seven years in my case, as you can imagine. So you have this weird scenario where your diet is incredibly high in zinc, throwing off the zinc to copper ratio, plus the diet itself lacks the nutrients to create enzymes that metabolize histamine. So you're exacerbating the copper deficiency and you're not getting enough copper. I mean, this is fairly easy to acknowledge and understand. You know, it's not rocket science. You, know, you have histamine intolerance. Your body needs the Dow enzyme to remove histamine. And a typical carnivore diet is lacking the nutrients needed to produce that enzyme. You know, are people running these carnivore forums and Facebook groups stupid? Or are they censoring information? Just like every other topic in the world, information is censored to prevent you from finding out the truth so people can profit. These clowns 
are willing to harm someone's health to sell a few hundred dollars worth of steak. That's literally how sad it is. You know, the Cattlemen's Association, various special interest funded groups in America have literally paid hundreds and hundreds of people to shove estrogenic feedlot beef down people's throats. And this is one of the side effects, histamine intolerance. Very simple. We have to correct the zinc to copper ratio. Vitamin C on paper, you know, mechanically speaking, it definitely helps, but I personally did not use vitamin C to fix my histamine intolerance. Vitamin C is great for optimizing antioxidant cycles and it even binds to histamines in the gut, but copper fixed everything for me. If you're one of those people who want to do this naturally without supplements, uh, you might suffer an awfully long time trying to fix this. You know, foods like mushrooms, salmon, as I said, squid are very high in copper, but is your gut in a state where it can efficiently absorb that copper? If you want to roll the dice for a few months and try to fix it that way you can, <laughs> I don't recommend it. Get a copper glycanate supplement, a chelated copper supplement. It's very cheap, eight, nine, ten dollars. Uh, I might get one on organ supplements for you guys, but again, it's, it's a an eight or nine dollar supplement, I'm probably gonna break even on it. So you want to take four to eight milligrams of copper per day for approximately two months before you're kind of fixed. The idea here is to balance the daily amount of zinc you're consuming on carnivore while correcting the past excess of zinc. As you can imagine, if you're eating two, three, four pounds of meat per day, that's an incredible amount of zinc that you've accumulated over months to a year, two years. And I found that Four milligrams of copper per meal uh, for two meals per day worked for me without any adverse side effects. Uh, you can go higher initially, but I don't recommend it. Uh, I tried a copper oxide supplement and it made me nauseous. I'm not sure about going really high with like a copper glycanate or a chelated copper supplement. And guys, this was so extreme. My histamine intolerance was so bad and I was so copper deficient I would not sleep unless I took the copper supplement. And if I ate a food that was particularly high in zinc and not balanced, like when I ate steak instead of salmon, it would be notably worse. My sleep would be notably worse. And there were like several days where I would forget to take the copper supplement and I eventually realized I was so zinc dominant that I needed the copper just to sleep. And you should notice an immediate difference. And after about four to five weeks, you know, most of the Histamine intolerance symptoms should go away. It'll be a lot better. And the only real way to measure this metric, how much copper and zinc is in your body, is a hair mineral analysis. And those are around $100. But the problem is if you're supplementing copper while you get the analysis, it will throw things off. Uh, what you have to try to figure out is, you know, how long have I been carnivore? How much zinc have I eaten over the past two years? How much copper makes up for that? You know, so this is definitely not something that is fixed overnight, but you will notice an immediate difference when you start supplementing copper. And as with everything I tell you guys, it works. You'll notice a difference. Uh, you can definitely throw in vitamin C, 500 milligrams with each meal, maybe twice a day. I'm doing some research on vitamin C myself and some experiments right now. Uh, so I'll get back to you guys on that hopefully next week. Uh, but I'm not going to go in depth on the other vitamins, minerals, and other parts of a protocol to fix this, mainly because it's very subjective. And if you guys do want personal help, you can reach out to me via frank for a consultation. And there's definitely nutrient synergy aspects that have to be kept in mind, uh, as well as other precautions. Uh, one other thing that does get brought up a lot is freshly slaughtered and frozen meat. I've had people email me about Frankie's free range meat, you know, if we have freshly slaughtered, you know, meat that is immediately frozen after slaughter. And we do offer that once or twice a month, but I tell people that if you have a histamine intolerance so severe that you have to eat freshly slaughtered meat, that's not a good long-term solution. And when I was having this histamine intolerance really bad last year, I was literally eating meat slaughtered the night before and I still had a histamine reaction. Like I would literally kill a duck and eat it the next morning, even the same day, and I still got a histamine reaction from it. So, you know, there's some gut dysbiosis, gut bacterial imbalance issues that contribute to histamine intolerance that are zinc to copper related. I will say that I've been able to eat incredibly high histamine foods, and as long as I take copper with that meal, I'm fine. Yogurt, kefir, super fermented rotten foods, cheese, and the reason you want to eat high histamine foods is because they have probiotic bacteria and vitamin K2. 
And in most scenarios where you have to fix your gut microbiome, you need to consume those foods. But high probiotic food, high vitamin K2 food equals high histamine. And if you have a histamine intolerance and you're avoiding a key part of you know fixing your gut, it, it makes things a little bit difficult. So uh, for anyone that's been having gut dysbiosis issues, that type of stuff, this copper supplement might very well be your solution. And if you guys have any additional questions about histamine, definitely check out the video I did a couple months back. I will link that at the end here. If you guys have any you know, more input, any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully this new whiteboard setup is reasonable. I know my hair is not reasonable and I know my outfit is not reasonable. These pants are a little tight. If you guys want to support me, there's a bunch of stuff down in the comments. As I mentioned, you can go to frank stefanocom If you guys do want a one-on-one -on -one consultation, Frankie's Hearing Age Meat, Organ Supplements, Frankie's Naturals, uh, check out all of that stuff down below. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we will do a live stream later on Frank Tufano. I think we'll do a carnivore diet Q&A, uh, so definitely tune in for that.